الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد وبالله الحمد وعهيب وركيسه الله تبارك وتعالى وتوفيقه on this day يوم الأحد the word of the Hijjah the word of the Hijjah 21st, 22nd, 23rd ah I think I tell you someone knows it if we all don't know it, it's a problem ah what? 25 the 25th of the Hijjah 1,424 years after the Hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Mecca to Medina which is agreement with and I got a feeling everyone's going to know this February the what? the 15th 2004 there will come a time insha'Allah ta'ala where we'll know the Hijrah dates better than we know the dates that the kuffar have that's coming inshallah ta'ala masjid of fajr of chester presents a series of less lectures as suggested by our noble sheikh ubayr ibn abdullah al-jabiri rahimahullah am hafizahullah entitled be steadfast upon the way of the salaf and be aware of the misguidance of the khalif be steadfast upon the way of the Salaf and beware of the misguidance of the Khalif. The main intent that the Sheikh wanted, Hafidahullah, from for this type of gathering. And you see that times are changing in the sense that we now have connection with the scholars and, and we take their suggestions as to what we should have our conferences centering around and what the subject matter of the conferences should be. There was a time where you had conferences and you didn't call anyone from the scholars to, to define as to what should be taught and what the people should benefit from. The intent behind it was back to the basics. Was a gathering where everyone is being reminded about the fundamentals of the deen. The basic issues of the deen. The foundation of the deen. This is what the intent was. So that someone should tell, or someone should express, and the speaker should express from the podium and the like, that being Salafi and saying you're Salafi, it's not enough unless and until you're implementing it. Unless until you're practicing it. And being Salafi means that you're upon Tawheed. And you must know Tawheed with its aspects with its aspects, as the Salaf understood it, not adding to it anything that the Khalif, that Ahl Bid'ah, and those of the Khalif added to it, not adding to it a fourth category called Hakamiya, but knowing Tawheed al Rububiyya, wa Tawheed al or also a Tawheed al Ibadah, as it's called, and Tawheed al Asma Sifat, or as they have split it sometimes in two. And we have talked about that. To know Tawheed. To know the meaning of La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. To know the meaning of that great, of this great kalima, this great word. What does it mean? What does, what are we bearing witness to? What, how are we to implement it? And follow it? And to practice it? And to call to it? And to live upon it, inshallah, and die upon it? To sacrifice for it. What is this word? What are its conditions? What is it based upon? Okay, it's based upon a nafi and his thought that you're affir- you're denying something and affirming something. It's based upon iman and kufr. Kufr bit ta'hud, a disbelief in all false deities and iman that Allah alone should be worshipped. Back to the basics. The meaning of Muhammad Rasulullah, salawat Allah wa salam alayhi. What does that mean when you bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah? 
How do you or Salafi believe it? How do you or Salafi? How do you implement it? How do you or Salafi call to it? What are the matters that are connected to it? When you say Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, just as La ilaha illallah has conditions, and every Salafi should know those conditions regarding La ilaha illallah, the seven shurut, the seven conditions, or some make it eight, when they include Wala wa bara and these issues. Also, Muhammad Rasulullah has conditions. Has conditions. La ilaha illallah means I will not worship except Allah ta'ala. No one has the right to be worshipped except Allah. Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, and I will not worship it except as Muhammad worshipped him alayhi salam. In the same manner, in the same way, as Muhammad alayhi salam worshipped him. And it means, tasdiquhu fi ma akhbara, affirming what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with him believing as truthful. Whatever came from the lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whatever came from the tongue of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of information, you believe it. Ta'atuhu fi ma'amara, obedience in what he orders. When Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam orders something, that's it, you do it. You carry it out, you implement it. Staying away from that which he forbid. When Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbids something, that's it, not a second word, you just stay away from it. You avoid it. No kalam, no talk. Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said this is haram, then you avoid it. And of course, and that you don't worship Allah except what he legislated. The kafiya, the how, the kamiya, the amount, the zaman, the time, and the conditions thereof, and those that, and the matters and conditions and things that complete it, this is to be done just like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was doing it. Khalisan lillah, sincerely for Allah, wal muwafaka, in agreement with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the manner that he did. In order for a deed to be accepted, you know, we talking about back to the basics. It must be khalisan wa sawaban. It must be sincere. That is done for the sake of Allah ta'ala and Allah alone. Seeking the face of Allah. Seeking the word of Allah. Seeking the pleasure of Allah. Wa sawaban, correct. It must be done in accordance with the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For it to be correct. Back to the basics. Back to the basics. That's what Sheikh Hubei wanted us to be. He wanted us to understand that you are Salafi. Of the five pillars of Islam, there is a pillar called Salah. And this is something that you have to make five times a day. You have to make Fajr, and you have to make Dhur, and you have to make Asr, and you have to make Maghrib, and you have to make Isha. And that you can't miss those prayers. And there's nothing that allows you to miss those prayers. That if you oversleep and you wake up, you get to praying. And if you're sick, and you can't get off your, stand up to pray, then you pray sitting. And if you're sick and you can't, Pray except lying down, then you pray lying down. And if you can't move and accept your eyes, then you pray with your eyes. Salat is never a responsibility that is lifted or that you're excused from. That has to be done five times a day. And there's no salat without tahur, tahara. And that means that you, O Salafi, have to know how to clean yourself. How to make, how to make wudu. The man of making wudu. The proper way of making wudu. The proper way of ghusl. Rather ghusl from Geneva or whatever the case may be. Five times a day, salat never to be left. 
never to be abandoned, never to be neglected, never to be, you are never to be found slacking in it, never to be found doing it haphazardly. Five times a day, salat wa khushur. Well, and devotion. And concentrating and reflecting upon what you said. The salat must be done. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Sallu kama ra'aytu mu'ni wa salli. Pray as you have seen me pray. And as Sheikh Nasser called his book, the prayer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described in the authentic sunnah, min takbir ila taslim ka'annaka tarahu. From takbir, Allah Akbar, to taslim, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, one method of doing it, as if you were seeing Muhammad a.s. do it in front of you. Salah, what is conditions? That you face Qibla. Not allowed to make salah without facing Qibla. Not allowed to make salah, and you haven't even tried to find the direction of Qibla. Just come in and pray any way you want. No. Because Qibla, finding Qibla is a condition of salafi. So you have to find, fulfill that condition. Or ruku, or suju, things that you must do in the, in the salat that are from the wajibat and from the arkan, from the pillars of the salat. And what if you mess up in salat? What should you do? What is the case in that regard? All of these issues must be understood as establishing salat. And the same thing goes for fasting Ramadan, and for zakah, and for hajj. For the Prophet Islam say, خُذُ عَنِّي مَنَاسِكَكُمْ Take from me your hajj rights. Back to the basics. These are the issues that we are to be learning in our houses and in the masajid. Learning in our houses and in the masajid. Talking to our friends about. Focus upon. Dealing with and those who are responsible for. And back to the basics, your salafi. Are the pillars of Iman. The six pillars of Iman. Belief in Allah. Belief in His angels. Belief in His prophets and messengers. Belief in His books. Belief in the decree. Belief in the last day. Belief in the decree, the good and the evil thereof. You don't have to do it with tarti. You can. These matters must also be taught and must also be learned. Are we teaching it to our children? Are we teaching it to our wives? Are we ourselves learning it? This is what it means to be salafi. Sticking to these matters, having resolve of uh, res- uh, uh, any the battle, be firm on these matters. This is what it means to be Salafi. This is what it means to be Salafi. Do you believe in Allah Taala Ta'ala in the proper way? Do you believe in the angels in the proper way? Do you believe, O oh Salafi, in Allah like the Salaf believed in Allah? Do you believe in the angels like the Salaf believed in the angels? And in the same definition of Iman, the same understanding, and in his books and his prophets and messengers in the last day, and decree like this. Are these matters taught in the household? Are they matters that are learnt? Back to the basics. The matters back to the basics. Reading the book of Allah Taala, for if it is as the Salaf has stated. That the Quran is the words of Allah Taala, غير مخلوق, not created. من هو بدع وليه يعود. From him it came, and to him will return. Where is your position regarding the Book of Allah Taala? Do you recite it in the day and in the night? Where is the understanding of the nusus or the ayat of Quran and the tafsir? The explanation of the Quran. Back to the basics of Salaf. 
back to the basis of Salafi. And in the area of Sunnah, taking from the Sunnah, making sure everything that you connect to Mustafa, salawatullahi wa salam alayhi, is authentic. That is in fact a sahih hadith. It is in fact an authentic hadith. That outside of Bukhari and Muslim, those ahadith that are outside Bukhari and Muslim have to be checked and verified by the scholars of hadith. And they have to judge as to their soundness and declare them to be authentic. That we cannot connect to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anything unless it has, in fact, a sound is not in the other conditions of our hadith which is sahih. Back to the basics of Salafi. What is your position regarding Bukhari? Have you read it? From cover to cover. In the English version translation, have you read from volume 1 to volume 9? Have you read for in, from in the ma'amal of niyat? Actions are but by intentions. To that last hadith, which is there are two words. Khafifatani ala lisan. Faqilatani fi mizan. Habibatani lil rahman. Two words. Light upon the tongue. Heavy upon the scale. Beloved by Rahman. They are subhanallah wa bihani subhanallah hadith. O kama kare salat. That had from the beginning to that end, to the end of, of, of that, Bukhari. You read Sahih Muslim from cover to cover. And like this, back to the basics of Salaf. In the area of akhlaq, the area of morals and manners of behavior, the areas which to tell us to tell the truth and don't lie, to be just and don't be unjust. To not spy on your brother, not cheat your brother, not abuse your brother, and so on and so forth. Not to backbite the Salafi. Back by Ahl al there is no ghibah regarding them. But the Salafi, you don't backbite the Salafi. You don't backbite any the general believer who has no association to bidah and you're not one against bidah. Because the general situation of the Muslim is what? That he's sacred. That he's sacred. Inviolable, sacred. His blood, his wealth, and his honor are not to be touched. Not to be disrespected. Not to be transgressed against. Back to the basics of Salafi. لا يؤمن أهدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه None of you truly believes that he lost for his brother of good what he lost for himself. Al-Muslim Ahu Muslim. The Muslim is the brother of a Muslim. These are the matters that we are to have inculcated, imprinted upon our hearts, directly something that we implement in our lives. But this is part of the revelation that Allah Taala sent down. This is part of what Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke of. And we are those who follow the kitab and the sunnah and the fahm of salaf salaf. And these were the matters that they were upon. We are to enter in Islam totally. But to khulfi silmi kafa into Islam totally. Not taking just some parts. Iman is, is 60 as one hadith or 70 as another hadith says. Something that branches. Topmost part is bearing witness and none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. The lowest part is what? Removing something from the way. Removing something to harm from the way of the believers. We're to act upon all of that. Back to the basics. Back to the basics. You Salafi, you don't cheat. You Salafi, you don't trick. You Salafi, you don't con. You Salafi, you don't lie. You Salafi, you do not arrogant. You Salafi, you're not boastful. You Salafi means all of that. It is a nisbah, a connection to the Salaf. To the best of this ummah. To the best of this ummah. 
as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, khairul nas karni. The best people is my generation. Then those who follow, follow them. Then those who follow. Khairul nas, the best people in what? In the sizes of their body. In their strength, their physical strength. In their fasaha, articulation of words. Are the best of the people in their deen. Khairul nas, the best people in their deen. Back to the basics. Back to the Islam. That when Allah took Allah blessed, you don't understand who he was. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Iman hit your heart, and before that you was upon Kufa. When guidance hit your heart, and before that you was upon misguidance. When you were on the brink of the fire, all but falling therein, and Allah took Allah saved us from it. And brought it to the Islam. Back to the basics. The Islam that gave you, the, invigorated you, that moved you, that inspired you, that changed you, that made you different than you were. Back to the basics. The Islam that Allah SWT revealed from the heavens. The Islam that if we didn't find what type of condition, what type of miserable, despicable condition will we be in? Back to the basics. From the basics of Islam and from one of its greatest asul principles. This is that great principle that Muhammad Waha mentions in the six principles as the second principle and that is the asul of unity. The principle of unity. Al-Wahda. Oneness. Being together. Having harmony. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about this. Was he wasting his time? La, Mustafa alayhi wa sallam didn't waste his time. When he talked about the relationship of a believer to another believer, he expressed them as being kajasad and wahid. Like one body. Like one body. Check out the parable. Understand the mithal, the example. The believers in relationship to one another. Relationship into their mercy and their affection to one another. It's like one body. One body that if one part, one adun, one member of that body aches, then all the body stays up all night out of fever and whatever, being unable to sleep. One member of the body is disturbed. All the rest of the body is disturbed. One member of the body is hurt. All the rest of the body is hurt. One member of the body is in difficulty. All of the body is in difficulty. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the believers are like a building. A building, one brick supporting the other brick. One brick supporting the other brick. Bunyan Marsus. Back to the basics. If we can't have unity, and all we have is disunity, if we can't get along, and all we do is differ then we have no understanding of Salafiyyah. We have no true understanding of Salafiyyah. And it's a false claim that we're making. And it's a false claim that we're making. To say Salafi, 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 like it's some Sufi dhikr. Salafi, 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 Staff, Tala. Anyone can do that. Salafi is an implementation. Salafi is a dedication. Salafi is a resolve to be upon the deen 
that Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali was upon. Radiallahu anhu majma'i. Where's this asl? How is it that is mentioned in all of the books? Well, the vast majority of the books, and we don't practice it at all. We walk by it like it's nothing. Like all of those nusus are nothing. Oh, what's that ayah? What tasimu bi habilillah jamee'a wa la tafarraku? Hold to the rope of Allah together and don't separate. Yeah, I heard that one. No, Akhi, you heard it. But when are you going to implement it? No, Akhi, you heard it. But when are you going to reflect upon it? No, Akhi, you heard it. But when are you going to resolve to implement it in your life? To bring it into the waqa? To bring it into the reality? Let us see the, fruit, the fruits of what your tree bears. Let us see the reality of that which you claim. Every one of us in this room believes and knows from the bottom of his or her heart that Islam is the means of success. There's no success without Islam. And we know that for every deviant group, for every group that ascribes itself to Islam, there's only really one group that is upon Islam. And it is the Ta'ifat al-Mansura, the victorious group. And it is the Firqat al-Najiyah, the saved group. And it is Ahl al-Hadi, Ahl al-Athar. It is the Salafis. But where? Or when? Or how? Did this matter get cut up? Where did we get played? How did we go wrong? What did we misunderstand from what we read? Why can't it not be implemented and brought into reality? Why can't it not be implemented and brought into reality? Back to the basics. Back to the basics. How many of us take our children and teach them the deen of Allah tabarakat ta'ala? Why do we seem to think that the Next Abu Bakr of the Ummah is coming. Or the next Abu Umar of the Ummah is coming. Or the next Uthman of the Ummah is coming. Or the next Ali of the Ummah is coming. Or the next Khalid ibn Walid of the Ummah is coming. Or the next Sa'id ibn Waqas of the, of the Ummah is coming. Or the next Abu Ubaid ibn Jarrah of the Ummah is coming. Or the next Ibn Taymiyyah of the Ummah is coming. Or the next Ibn Qayyim of the Ummah is coming. Or the next Muhammad Wahhab of the Ummah is coming. Or the next Al-Albani of the Ummah is coming. Or the next Ibn Uthaymain of the Ummah is coming. Or the next Mukbil of the Ummah is coming. Where are they coming from? Out of the sky. Out of the sky. One day we're going to wake up and they're amongst us. Or they're coming from our lines. They're coming from our progeny. That is the wombs of our wives that have to bear them. And it's us and them. The husband and wife team. The husband and wife team. The Salafi tag team. That has to raise them. She does her, her, her part. And you do your part. Teaching the child. From the time when. His fingernail starts to grow. Where's Allah? Yabunay oh my son. Where's Allah? Yabunay oh my daughter. Where's Allah? When they answer you that Allah Ta'ala is over the throne, over the heavens, above everything, then you're doing your job. Teaching the children Tawheed. Teaching the children that which is easy to teach them of the Sunnah. Teaching the children to remember Allah. Constantly, as much as is possible, developing them a love for Allah Taala that is beyond or cannot be equal to the love that they possess for anything else in existence. Developing for for them and them a love for Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a love. That is more than they love any 
man in existence, including their father. This is where we know we're going back to the basics. Be steadfast upon the way of the Salaf and be aware of the misguidance of the Khalif. The Sheikh wanted it to be talked about basics. Most people, when they see the title, would thought that when they would be thinking about Ahl al Bidah. Warning is Ahl al Bidah. They're not sitting with Ahl al Bidah. They're not talking with Ahl al Bidah. They're not befriending Ahl al Bidah. And don't pray the funeral prayer of Ahl al Bidah. And don't salam Ahl al Bidah. This gathering was meant to remind us that there is more to Salafiyya than what we think it is. More to Salafiyya than how we portray it. More to Salafiyya than what we show. More to Salafiyya than what we're doing. More to Salafiyya than how we're expressing it. Brother, it's higher than that. Brother, it's higher than that. It's greater than that. It's stronger than that. It's clearer than that. It's better than that. And it starts with having a solid foundation. You cannot build anything without a solid foundation. Anything built upon a crooked, un imbalanced foundation with what? With fall. With crumble. And this is what you find happening. Brothers on a minhaj for a period of time and then he's off of the minhaj. Because his foundation wasn't there. He never understood the basics. He never sat and studied the basics. He thought he was too heavy for Usul al Too heavy for Qawla Muthi by Muhammad Wahhab al Wasabi. Too heavy for Kitab al Tawheed by Muhammad Wahhab. And I heard it was some Da'if hadith in there. Who is just like that? Well, don't you know that there are those that eat hadith that you claim in there? That after centuries or two centuries or whatever, the scholars studying it, teaching it to their students, that they have in fact informed us of what narrations are weak so that we can avoid them and be aware they are in fact weak. And that's enough. Not so much that in Usul al you might find a hadith, a dua who a mukhli A dua mukhli Dua is the brain or the, the root of worship. Brothers say, what a hadith ta'i? The sahih hadith is a dua who al Dua, it is the ibad. How did you learn that? Oh, well, it was in the book. Kitab ta'id. Footnote. As long as there's a tanbih, as long as you've been made aware, khalas. Brothers who thought they were beyond these matters never gave, or sisters who thought they were beyond these matters never gave importance to it. Finding out now, those who Allah has shown his mercy, finding out now that that was not the case, but that is a foundation. It's the base, the basis. It is the concrete that holds it all together. It's the proper understanding from it. You get the proper understanding of what Islam is. Without that base, without those foundations, without those pillars, without those fundamentals, without those principles, you have no understanding at what you're looking at. You have no understanding what you're trying to practice. No understanding what you're trying to implement. You don't know what you're doing. You can't connect the dots. You don't have the understanding. So back to the basics. Don't tire from the basics. Don't get bored with the basics. Stay with the of the left as long as you have to. Say Aqeel two or three or four times. Study the explanation of Kitab Tawheed, that Muhammad Wahhab, Rahimullah, who passed away, 
امام دعا هذا مجدد شيخ الاسلام ثريت in the various explanations ثريت كشف الشبهات brother ثريت كوايد الارض ثريت learn and then practice and then give dawah to it then have patience upon the harm or the difficulties that will come your way This is what the Sheikh wanted us to understand. That these liqa'at, these meetings, these gatherings that we have, are not just gatherings with no great benefit of them, but that we come away with some understanding regarding matters. We come away with something that we can bite our teeth upon. Something that we can benefit upon. Something that we can begin to practice. Be steadfast up on the way to Salaf and be aware, be aware of the, or beware of the misguidance of the Khalif. And that the Khalif are misguided, and we have to be steadfast up on this way. What was the way to Salaf? Were they not teaching their children Tawheed? And teaching their wives Tawheed, their daughters Tawheed, their sons Tawheed? Were they not teaching them that which is Those matters that will bring one closer to Allah, tabarak ta'ala, from the ibadah to worships and the ta'at and the obediences, where they're not teaching them to stay away from that which is haram, stay away from that which Allah took ta'ala has forbidden, where they're not teaching them a belief in the jannah, and what Allah has, ta'ala has prepared for the, for the inhabitants of jannah, of na'im, of bliss, and, and, and of enjoyment. When they're not teaching them that the dunya is nothing, it's weak, it's filthy, it's low, it's transitory, it's temporary, and that the akhirah, the hereafter, that's your real life. That's where you're going to be forever. But they're not teaching you to fear the fire, to be aware of the fire, to guard against the hell fire, the wrath of Allah. The punishment of Allah, the hate of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. Aren't they concentrating on these type of matters? If they were doing this, teaching their children not to be materialistic, and teaching their children that the dunya is a fitna, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, for every ummah there's a fitna, and the fitna my ummah is money. Why are they not teaching them? These type of issues. And if we're not doing it, how are we being steadfast upon their way? We're being steadfast upon saying we're on their way. But far as being steadfast upon doing and acting upon their way, if you really thought about it, it would bring you to tears. If you really thought about it, your, your, your heart would, would melt. The condition that we're in. Condition that we're in is a condition that those who fear Allah Taala and who are aware of the last day makes their hair turn gray. Condition that we're in. Where's the next generation of those of us Salafi are coming from? Where? From Marikh, from Mars. Where? We have to take it up to the next level. We have to begin to be inspired and have, have and be revitalized and be invigorated regarding the deen of Allah. Regarding Allah. There are things that are lawful that can be done by his pastimes and the like. But our children must learn that entertainment is not the purpose you came into existence. Didn't say what my khalaq the lin ends with the jinn in la the la abadun yala abun. I did not create the jinn and men to just play. It's ibadah, brother, to worship. It's the kufar who believe they're here to hear, eat and drink and have, you know, fun. Eat, drink and be merry for tomorrow we die. You're already dead. You think that's your purpose in life? To entertain myself. To enjoy as much as I can enjoy. Akhi, this is not Jannah. 
You got the address wrong. This is not Jannah. You're in the wrong place trying to do that. This is the place for harvesting. Rather, this is the place for placing the seed in the soil. Hereafter is the place for harvesting. Harvesting it. Getting it. Uh, the reward for that. This is the case with that. We have to put this in the hearts of our children. Because the Kufar seem to think that life is entertainment. That if you're bored, then life is over. That if you're bored, you might as well commit suicide. It's over. That there must be constant, instantaneous satisfaction. I must be entertained. I must play. Salaf did not have that understanding. They taught their children about an akhir. They taught their children about a hereafter. They taught their children about the reality of this dunya. That even though it looks apparently like it's beautiful, that the end result of it is that it is a destruction. It is destruction for you if you follow after it. Destruction for you if you race after it. Didn't the Sabbath teach their children that the Jannah of Allah Taala has in it that which no eye has seen, that which no mind has conceived of, that which no ear has heard. This brings me to the point that even Qayyim Rahim Allah mentions in his book, Journey to the Balad al Afra, or Journey, Journey to the Balad al Afra, to the place of enjoyment and bliss. He said that those who leave off the listening to music in this life, who leave off listening to music in this life, that Allah Taala will allow them to experience and hear the sounds of Jannah, which cannot be imagined. The blissful sounds in Jannah, which cannot be imagined. Those who wear silk in this life, well, the men won't wear what silk in the next life. Those who want to drink from gold and silver in this life from the men, honey, won't wear what? Won't drink from gold and silver in the hereafter. Those who want to drink khamar in this life, won't drink the khamar in the hereafter. This is how they taught them. And the Salafiya is not just what we think it is, but it's more than that. It's teaching them to have a concept from their early age. A concept, an understanding how you should look at this world that you found yourself in. What should be your mouth of your stance? What should be your view regarding this world? Are we teaching them that? Are we being steadfast upon that? I don't think we are. This is some of what the Sheikh wanted be discussed in such a meeting as this. We hope that Allah Taala makes what we say to be beneficial to all of us, and the evidence for us on the day of judgment, not the evidence against us. Father, we salaam Allah and the Muhammad. Nothing? Nothing even from the floor? Turned it off. Anybody? Any questions? It's outside the subject. I was talking about pertaining to the subject. Yeah. But in general, they differ about it. Uh, but the vast majority say no, she cannot call it that. Nah.
individuals. We want to bring them together and keep our teams for particular one set of devices. Tell us, what should the person do in their situation? And he's trying to get brothers together. And uh, he's the, the person trying to make this slap. He himself will be harmed in some way. Inshallah ta'ala, if both of them start to find problems with him or make difficulties for him, he should uh, consider this as an ajr, reward from Allah ta'ala. Because there's a uh, any uh, a hadith, authentic a hadith that indicate that there's no better deed. I mean, one of the best of the deeds to do is to islah that debate, to bring people together. And that the person who does that can reach a level that uh, those who pray and those who fast don't reach. It's one who brings people together. And show that it's such a great maslaha involved, a great uh, benefit involved, is one of the few occasions that one is allowed to lie. And lying, as you know, is in general is haram. But it's allowed in this case because it brings about a greater good, which is the unity. So that shows you the importance of the manner. When one can make islah and bring recon- reconciliation between people and unity, this is what uh, the person should do. He should rush to do that for us. And he, it's very beneficial. Now. Encourage families that are having fitting. But uh, don't don't come out to the imam or to the righteous people of the community or good companions to resolve the situation due to the fact that they don't want people to know that they have problems to begin with. In this respect, all you can do is give nasiha and uh, let them know I mean, that everybody has problems. Everybody goes through moments of difficulties. And everybody uh, at some t- point in time or another need advice and need uh, to have some type of counseling situation or advice from people. And there's nothing wrong with that. Prophet Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa indicated that a deen or said, a deen and a siha. A deen and a siha, a deen and a siha. That a deen is sincere advice. And it's sincerity in advising. Right? There's no problem with that. But one can, does it with patience and tries to make them aware of it in that regard. This is about women fighting in the battle. In general, jihad, I mean, it's outside the subject, but to answer it quickly, jihad is not something obligatory upon the uh, women. They find themselves in a condition, like you mentioned, Umm Amira, I think you mean Umm Ammara. But if they find themselves in some type of situation where they have to defend themselves, then this uh, is one thing, but it's not something obligatory upon the women. Not something obligatory upon the women. I can't hear you. And in the Allah Ta'ala, those who are not uh, Salafis and they have not died upon disbelief, they will go to paradise eventually. Every Muwah, everyone upon Tawheed who believes in Allah Ta'ala uh, alone and believes in Muhammad is the Messenger, has that Iman, will come out of the hellfire no matter what occurs before that and enter uh, paradise one day. So if their bid'ah, their innovation, is not mukaffara, that which is makes them take them out of fold of Islam, then they will of course inshallah one day go to Jannah. And there are different books to start with depending on what one is able to do. And there are different books that are coming out now that are nice 
like the obligatory matters for a believer to from a believer has to believe. It's a good book to start with. And he qaidat the sahiha the correct belief in that which in uh, and its opposite by Ibn Baz is another book. Uh, and the usul thalatha is more detailed. So if someone wants to get to of course in more detail with his explanation, then he will go to that, of course, and start and beginning his studies there. But say for for us, it's not only a matter of, of studying a good book, but first of all, is uh, getting the correct understanding of what Islam for was or is in the beginning of the matter. So we need much literature or require much literature just on what is very basic Islamically, what how is to be understood. You see what I'm saying? Nah. You just have to rec- you just have to recall to them like if he's saying that if it's someone uh, having a lot of difficulties and problems in their life and the reason that they're having these difficulties is that they don't go back to the basics and they don't underst- have a basic understanding of what they're doing and the basic things that they're supposed to be about doing and you say to them well you should go back to the basics where well, they said I read that and I studied that you should remind them that uh, the best the head rather of I mean, uh, other than the Prophet salam, which who, who came later, the head of all of the father of all the prophets, Ibrahim salam, made dua to Allah to protect him and his children from worshiping idols, and he's the head of the Wahideen, the father of all the prophets. Yet he's fearing for himself and his children that they can fall into worshiping idols. So no, no one should feel that they're above going back to the basis and going back over the issue. How does one teach Zohar to children? One learns what Zohar is and practices it himself or herself first, and then inshallah they can teach it to the children. When a person who has been boycotted and made attempts after making Toba from his sins, attempts to seek righteous companionship, but is turned away. What should he do if in fact because of the sin he or she is avoided by those who are on righteous actions? This is a, a, a two-sided question. In reality, the, the matter is, is that upon them, him or her, is to keep trying. To keep trying. And upon the, the people in general is to have a some mercy when a person uh, repents and uh, comes back to that which is correct. And the matter is, as Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah stated, that place, uh, what he said basically was like two, two areas in your heart, both of them crying from the fear of ar rahmani Lo sha'a rabbuk, if your Lord had will, la kunta mithlahum, you would have been just like them. For the hearts are between the fingers of the beneficent or the merciful one. So mercy must be there at all times. That you could in fact be the sinner. And you can in fact be the one who's misguided. If and you should recognize the netma or the blessing of Allah upon you that you are not in that case and be making the dua of Afiyah. You know, Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah who has saved me from what he tested you with. The proverbial among many of his creatures uh, in this, with this preference like this, you know, but not a harshness type uh, motive. No, I think we have to end at this. Someone asks about those who are retired, are they mukhat? Uh, he means mukallaf. He has it written like mukallaf, but mukallaf. Are they, uh, uh, I mean, it depends on the level of retardation. If it's a level of retardation where they don't understand and they don't, you know, those type of things, because there's levels. Uh, depending on the level, they can be, in fact, someone who is not, someone who the pen is, in fact, lifted from. And Allah, Taala knows best.